Hey guys, it's Sadiq Matoa, and today I'm going to be talking about how to come up with an idea for a short animated film. This is a question that I get a lot, and I see this question a lot in comments on my YouTube videos, on my art, on my accounts, on my DMs, emails, etc. One thing you have to understand is that an animated short can be anything. It could have a story structure, it could just be a slice of life, or just a single moment in time, in a story. It could be a montage of sorts, or it could just be experimental mumble jumble. And honestly, the more I think about it, I don't think this applies to just animated short films or short films in general, but it can also apply to things like comics or story illustration even other medias like video games. If you saw my video review on Hofstad's Colosso course on animation, there was an important message that was said there, which was, hey, if you're making something, you don't have to be deep, you don't have to be thought-provoking. All you need to do with your art, or what your art needs to do, is just to merely exist. Nothing more, nothing less. Many people, including myself, we want to make the best that we can. Maybe that's something that's deep, provocative or something that's like super well written and well executed and I think that prevents a lot of people from actually making and finishing short films which is in theory very easy to do like if we were just to strip away the criteria the standards of deep or good writing or good animation I'm pretty sure we would make a lot of stuff without any fear if our sole purpose is just to make things just to exist like I said, there's a lot of different types of stories that you can tell with your short film. And the first one I want to talk about is your story structure centered film or a narrative focused film. The way I would describe these short films is that they have a clear beginning and ending. And then you also establish your setup, the setting, the plot, who the characters are, what the character wants, what their goals are, and if there's an obstacle between them and the goal. Or it could just be any other form of story structure, hero's journey, rag to riches, etc. Very conventional storytelling type of stuff. Many major animation studios that produce short films follow this structure. It's a good one to do if you want to focus on your writing skills, put that into practicality, and make it accessible for many types of people. I know when I did my student shorts, I really wanted to work for these major studios, so I followed the structure. The only caveat to this is that you spend a lot more time thinking about the story itself. The characters, if they obtain their goal, if they don't, how do they obtain the goal? and what message you're trying to say. And from my experience, you do many passes of this until you figure out what your story is about or what your film is all about. Another one that I personally love and I encourage many of you guys to do is to do a vignette, a slice of life, or just a moment or a scenario. Look, if you don't want to think too hard about story structure or trying to come up with the most provocative writing ever and you just want to make a short film, I would suggest doing something like this. Stuff like this doesn't have a very clear beginning or end, it just goes. It could just be two characters interacting with each other, it could be an elaborate fight scene, it could just be a moment of dialogue, it could be a hint to something more. These films could just be vibes, nothing more and nothing less. It could have a clear setup, it could have clear characters, but again, it doesn't have to have a film that has a really strong story structure or whatever that is that has a solid beginning and a solid ending. Then you have your montage films. So what I'm saying is that each of these cuts or sequences in the film don't really necessarily connect with each other, but generally they're in the same subject matter or theme. So examples of this for me would be things like anime opening sequences or proof of concepts that I've personally made for sizzle reels and trailers for story ideas that I have. They're just a collection of shots and ideas of what this product could be at the end. It could just be a collection or a compilation of things that you've done in the past and then somehow you've made it into some form of film. The previous two I mentioned will actually help you develop your writing skills and your character development skills. But something like this could just be imagination and eye candy and will allow you to experiment with the medium. Speaking of, you could have something that's very experimental, meaning it's non-conventional, maybe it's outside of the box or non-ordinary, very unorthodox. This could apply to the storytelling, whether or not characters are involved, what kind of visuals you're playing with, are you mixing media? The thing with experimental stuff is I don't really have a say in what an experimental film looks like. So I've talked about films with story, films without story, films that are just montage and a collection of shots. But for this one, I guess it's none of those that I mentioned earlier or something that's just unorthodox. Or you could mix different things up. So you could have a film that's a montage but somehow have a bit of storytelling there. Again, that's really all up to you to decide. 
I just talked about the types of short films that you can make, whether it's a story-driven film, a character-driven film, it's just a vignette, it's just a slice of moment, or maybe it's a montage of experimental stuff. Okay, so whatever you choose to do, maybe it's time to get an idea of what you want to do and figure out what your short film is about. So for me, for example, I think the very first thing that I do is maybe I draw a character that I enjoy drawing or that I like seeing. Or maybe I draw a visual imagery that is really cool to me. It could be a little doodle, it could be a little sketch, or it could be a very lavish illustration. Whatever it is, you want to make something based off that piece. And a lot of artists and animators do it that way which is forming a story based on a drawing or an illustrated piece that you did and you want to see if there is something there that is worth turning into a short film. So that's one way. Then what I would suggest doing is writing several different log lines. And a log line is a sentence that summarizes the setup of your idea. If you're developing something that has story and a structure, then you're probably going to want to establish the setting, your characters, and what they're trying to overcome or what they're trying to achieve. Or it could just be a log line or a sentence that summarizes the, the scenario or the vibe of your project. And if you have an inkling of an idea or you're making log lines based on an image that you created and you don't really have a figured out story or an idea, I would suggest writing as many log lines as you can based on that image that you made. Again, just write as many as you can and whatever is in your head the many possibilities that this project can be. And then take a long break from it, step away from it, refresh your mind, do something else, and then come back to it. Come back to all those log lines you wrote and start crossing out the ones that don't resonate to you anymore. And the ones that do resonate, well, you can start coming up with more specific log lines or you can just keep exploring from there. I keep a document of random log lines that I wrote many months ago. Some I don't even remember writing them at all, but maybe I'll revisit some other time. But I think it's a good idea to get into the habit of putting down your ideas down on paper and then sometime in the future you can look back at it, come back to it and see if there is something there or if there is something that resonates with you within those log lines. Okay, once you're happy with your ultimate log line, this is the log line that you want and now you want to make a short film based off this log line, then I would recommend writing an outline of it. So what this means is um, write down the plot in the film as you visualize it. So I would say write an outline of your short film in a paragraph and for each sentence or you know sentence by sentence, write down what happens in your actual film from beat to beat. So again, write it down as you're visualizing your short. What happens in the beginning, what happens in the middle, and what happens in the end. And now you already have a written down version of your short film in some way or form. The next thing you can do is maybe write a screenplay version of that outline. So, you know, actually putting it down in a screenplay format, in a script writing format, because it could be a good reference to running time for your film. So there's a general rule that one page per script is one minute of footage. So if you wanted to write your film in a script format so you can actually see how long your film can be, that could be wise to do. Now, for the films that I did back at school, I didn't do this. I personally wish that I did, but I think I was more in the mindset of, oh, I'm only going to do a script if my film has dialogue or if it has people talking. But a script can be useful for non-dialogue films as well. So if you want to do that, go for it. You can also do beat boards for your films, and I talked about this in a previous YouTube video where I talk about instead of storyboarding your whole thing, maybe write these single piece illustrations that summarize a key story moment or key moment in your film. That stuff can help you visualize what the film can look like. Now some people don't even write their films, they just jump straight into storyboarding, but nowadays I personally like having a writing so I know how the film starts, how the film ends. And at least I have a reference to board to rather than when I board, I tend to keep going. I tend to add more shots or more story moments that don't need to happen. So I get lost easily when I just jump straight into boarding. When I write things out, at least my thoughts and intentions are organized that way. So if you saw my video on working on Sonic the Hedgehog 2, I tend to do thumbnails of my storyboards before I even move on to storyboarding. So these little crude drawings to get an idea of the shots that I want, before committing to them in my full boards. Sometimes I draw alongside my script or sometimes I do this on a separate piece of paper, but 
you could even use those thumbnails instead, edit it together in an animatic or like a reel. And now you have a short film that's already fully typed. At this point, it's really just finessing the shots, tidying things down, and making the final image. So if you want to construct a clear roadmap of your film, I would say make an animatic or storyboard reel of it before you even start making fully finished shots or even start animating them. So again, when it comes to short films, especially for animation, it can be anything. It could be experimental or it could have a really clear, solid story structure. So this got me thinking, you know, coming up with a short film idea can be easy if you don't have a lot of high standards or a really tough criteria for it. I think the people who ask me this question have this notion or this idea of what is a great short film. It could be thought provoking, it could have solid writing, it could be really, really good. And they want to hit that criteria more so than just making a short film. But then a part of me also thought about people asking me this question. It could be a genuine question of how do you get an idea or how do you develop an idea for a short film? So I wanted to make a video of what I would do and how I would go about it. And I hope this helps you. There's nothing great than making a short film. All right, see ya. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.